No. All right. <laughs> yeah, Jack, I love you. All right, listen. We are going to spend about 10 minutes today um, just on a quick review, and then you guys are going to complete um, an entry task in chapters three and four. It's through Schoology, through Notability. You will end up printing it to the lab double-sided. Isaac, you can um, submit it through Schoology. So Isaac, you're going to be all of 10 minutes worth of video today just for a review. Um, so let's start off. When Libby first gets to the tavern, she thinks, once I walk in there, I ain't free no more. What does she mean by that? I ain't free. She's, uh, she's got to work in the so why, what does that have to do with freedom? Uh, she, uh, Go ahead, Noel. Um, when she, what she means by she needs to free no more is because she can't really leave until she pays off her mother's debts. Very good. So she is no, she's no longer free to work her own farm, her own crops. Right? She kind of belongs to somebody else. So, how is this affecting her identity? How is this beginning to affect her identity? Who is she becoming? What will she become? What kind of person does she turn into? She's kind of becoming a little depressed. A little depressed. Fine. All right. Which uh, means what? What is she going to be? That's an emotion. What kind of person will she grow into? Sad. Well, let's. Let's go back. Remember when the last chapter one and two we said, how does she feel about accepting help from Luke? Luke tried three times. And all three times, how does she feel about accepting help from Luke? Yeah, she was no, it doesn't, I don't need it. So what did that tell you about her identity? That she was brave and that she didn't want help from anybody else. Okay, what does it mean when you don't need help from someone else? You can do everything oh, yourself. You're independent. You're independent. So now, tables are turned. She's saying, if I walk in there, I'm not free. I'm no longer free. And as Alan said, she is going to have to work for someone else. So how is that? Huh? She has to rely on other people. So what is that doing to her identity? Making her Making her dependent, right? She's losing part of her identity. She's losing that independence, and she's becoming more dependent on people. She's becoming, she, instead of being self-reliant, she needs to rely on somebody else. Very good. So get your books handy dandy. Charlie comes to visit Liddy in Chapter 4, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, Absolutely. yes, yes. Sorry, oh, that was the you, you need to bring it. This is part of coming to class prepared. So, how does she feel once Charlie leaves? Alone. Alone. Prove it. Sean. Um, she feels like kind of depressed. Prove it. that prove that Liddy felt lonely? Very good. So your analysis would be really, I mean, the, the, where I'm going with this is you make a claim, she she's lonely, <coughs> then you prove it with a detail, and then you analyze how that detail is the best detail to prove your claim, and like Faith said, this proves the claim because it's stated directly in the quote, she's lonely. Kayla? Okay, so that your claim was what? She doubtful. is doubtful. And then your that's your quote. How does your quote prove doubtful? Um, so she wished she had said. So do you mean she was hopeful or doubtful? What's the difference? She wished for means, ooh, I want. Doubtful means like, yeah, I don't know. John? Um, read the same quote. Okay. And your claim was what? Disappointed. Oh, so how does your quote prove disappointment? Because 
when you wish you had done something, like you're kind of upset that you didn't do it. Perfect analysis. Good job. Good job. And then lastly, uh, Liddy is in the kitchen during winter time, and there is no work to really do on the uh, in Cutler's Tavern or outside. So everyone holds themselves up in the kitchen. What are the men talking about in the kitchen? Kayla? About how um, slaves are coming here and like they're getting shipped through um, What kind of slaves? Uh, well, yeah, I don't mean like nationality. I mean like... Oh, from the South. Okay, but what, what, what do you mean they're coming here? They're being shipped here? Oh, they're no, being they're running running away right and how do the two guys feel about runaway slaves they're not, like, they're kind of, open they don't up. have anything against them but they're like they want to show them that they're running very good um, so like, lastly the last thing I want you to do is open up to uh, page 32 uh, right at the paragraph it says they caught another slave up near Ferrisburg. The legislature can say all they want about not giving up runaways, but as long as their rewards are high, somebody is going to report them. So who's offering the reward? If the government is saying, you can't turn in, if a government says, listen, if a slave runs away, a slave runs away, that's tough. Who is offering the reward, Faith? The people who own the slaves. It's always saying, listen, the government can say all they want about not giving up runaways, but as long as those plantation owners offer the rewards, somebody's going to report them just to get the money. And then Enoch says, well, you got to decide. Who's in charge? Down in Washington? Slavery is the law of the land. Man buys a horse? Fair and legal. He sure as hell going after it if it bolts. You pay for something, it's yours. If a law says a man can own slaves, he's got a right to go after them if they bolt. Ain't no difference as far as I can see. So what is he saying? What is he's equating slaves to horses? He's saying like if they run away, the people that have them have the right to go after them and give them back. Right. So in Enoch's in Enoch's mind, slaves are property. Property. Right. Property. Right. Very good. Um, any other questions? Three and four. None. Okay. So open up Schoology. Uh, chapters 3 and 4, Entry Task. Send it to Nobility. 